Hello, my name is Hector Velasquez and welcome to GCSAA Inside the Shop. In today's episode, we're going to be showing you how to perform a voltage drop test. Now, voltage drop tests become very helpful when you have a piece of equipment that's a no-start situation. Now, assuming you checked all of your safety switches and all that, we're going to give the battery a visual inspection. We want to make sure that our cables are good, our terminals are good, there's nothing real crazy happening. Everything looks good. So another thing we would do is verify battery voltage. And we're going to connect our multimeter here real quick. And we're getting a reading of 12.68. This is really good. Next thing I would do is check voltage at the starter. And we are getting 12.6765. This is really good. Now let's check for resistance in our wire. And here we're getting a reading of 0.1. This is really good. Now, typically I would say, hey, the starter's bad. Let's change it out. But, in fact, the starter is not bad. Let me explain. We're going to understand how a voltage drop test works. Okay, so let's try to explain how voltage drop works or what happens. Now, spoiler alert, our cable, our battery cable is bad. On that unit but why is it that when we tested our battery we got 12 volts when we tested our cable for voltage we got 12 volts here we even tested for resistance and we saw a reading of point you know point one which is really good hardly any resistance at all what happened what did we go wrong or what did we miss well Here's the, this is how I learned it. And this is how I'm under, how I came to understand it. All right. It's like a pump house. We got a pump house, right? It's, let's say this pump house is your battery. And then here's a water pipe coming out, working a sprinkler head. So this pump house will put out 12 volts of pressure. Now, when we're testing, right? Same thing up here, 12 volts of voltage. When we're testing, we will get, we should see 12 volts anywhere along this circuit. Just like up here, we would see 12 volts anywhere along here. Now, coming back down here, what happens if we were to put, let's say, a reducer there, right? We're restricting flow. So on this side, we see 12 volts. Right after our reducer, we would see 9 volts, okay? It's the same thing up here. Now, we don't have a reducer, but let's say there's corrosion or something happened to the wire here. Okay, up until that point after that, we would see 9 volts. But why didn't we see that here? Well, where we missed or what we failed to do is just like here, this needs to be working. Water needs to be flowing through in order for us to see this nine volt drop, okay? If that sprinkler head is not working, okay? And water's just sitting there, eventually the pressure's gonna build up enough to where it'll equal 12 volts. The whole system will equalize. It's the same thing up here. The starter wasn't working, so the whole electrical wire was, let's say, pressurized. That's why we were reading 12 volts here, okay? Now, once we, what we need to do is start the starter, get the starter working, measure here, and see that voltage drop. Just like how the water, when it's working, all right, we're going to see that drop here because there's not going to be any pressure built up on this side. Okay, so now let's do this with the system working. We're going to move our lead over to the positive wire right there, and then we're going to take the other lead to the starter. Now we're reading zero as we should be. Now let's get the system working. We're going to start it and boom, there it is. We are seeing an up to eight volt drop. That is a lot. Okay. Now there's another easier way to do this. I'm just going to take my ground lead, put it on ground and then our positive lead to the starter. Now we're reading our battery 12.6. We're going to start the system, okay? And here we see 3.91 volts being delivered to the starter. That's why our starter is not starting. Now, 
resistance, okay? Why is it that we were reading almost no resistance at all when in fact we did have a resistance? We have corrosion built up in that wire. Well, let, it, let me explain it to you this way. It's really all about the multimeter. As we test for a wire for resistance, the multimeter is really only putting out a trickle of electricity, if you will, through that wire. So there's really not much that's going to be resisting that. That's why it reads as a perfectly good wire. The meter is just not putting out enough to put the wire under a load for us to read that on the other end. Well, as you can see, being able to perform a voltage drop test, we were able to precisely locate the root of the problem and avoid replacing unnecessary parts. I want to thank you for joining me here today on GCSAA Inside the Shop, where we're helping technicians one wrench at a time.